with authority. All right, we're joined by one of the best players on the San Jose State football team who has been there from when they were 2-11, and 1-11, and 11, and rising to playing for the Mountain West Championship and uh, a 1-0 so far and a huge game coming up with USC. Uh, so, Cade Hall, uh, first of all, thanks for joining us. I, I got to ask you, when, when you were coming out of high school and you went to Bellarmine, you looked at the San Jose State football program and saw what? Because in 2017, that team was 2-11, and 11, and then your first year, 1-11. and 11, So, did you have any kind of expectation that you'd be playing for a Mountain West championship this fast? You know, I, I saw a great coaching staff and I saw a great opportunity to be a part of a program rebuilding itself. You know, I, I think uh, I think it was really amazing to be a part of that turnaround and be part of that big culture change. And that's really something that I uh, that I saw when I was looking at San Jose State. And you believe that it would happen this quickly because, uh, you know, I remember um, when Brent Brenner was first hired, Nobody really knew, okay, you know, what are these guys going to do? Uh, but man, uh, we look at your roster now and you have so many dudes who can play. You know, I, I had to believe it would happen this quickly, you know, and I, I think everyone on the team did. When when we were uh, one in 11 and stuff like that, we knew we were close. Our, our record didn't reflect it, but we were losing a lot of games by a very small point margin. and. Uh, we knew we were close and we knew we had those dudes who just needed a couple more years to develop. So if we stay on the subject of Brent Brennan, I was there when he had his inter introductory press conference and I know that alums like James Jones showed up. So what kind of confidence does he inspire? Obviously, he, he left a huge impression on people that he'd been around in the past. Coach Brennan is the definition of a player's head coach. He loves his players, he cares about us, and he cares about us first before he cares about winning games. And I think that's one of the reasons the program has seen success because he invests in the players and he tries to build us up. And then in turn, you know, we play better and win more games. Now looking at last season, obviously it's one of the most successful seasons in the program in a long time, but it was also just insanely challenging. I mean, what was it like to have to overcome the incredible amount of obstacles that you guys were throwing. You really didn't even have a home stadium. You couldn't play in your own county. You guys were effectively nomads all over the place. And you, you clobbered Larry Beal's Hawaii football team. So uh, how difficult and challenging was that year? And did it kind of bring you guys together? Did it, did it make it a bit of a special season for you in some ways? Oh, it absolutely did. You know, and I, I think the more we got used to dealing with that adversity off the field, then the better we were able to deal with it while we were playing. We, we just got so used to rolling with the punches and stuff like that, that it turned us into a really resilient football team for the whole season. I don't really want to get into the whole university of Hawaii game. Um, if we can avoid that, I would enjoy it. But uh, there was a time Cade, when we used to beat you guys like a drum. <laughs> Um, it's kind of turned a little bit uh, recently. I, I want to go back to one of the, the points that Casey was making, because before this season started, Coach Brennan said he, he gathered teammates together. And I guess you have kind of a leadership group and asked, all right, what do you guys need from us? And you guys said, we want to go back to Humboldt State, which I think he was kind of surprised by. And that's where you had to practice last year, as Casey mentioned, for training camp and such, uh, and, and during the season because your county was locked down. What was so special about the Humboldt experience that made everyone want to go back there in terms of team bonding? You know, you, uh, you really get to know someone when you're sharing – uh, a bathroom <laughs> everyone is on the same floor everyone is using the, I mean we were just in each other's space all the time I mean we're eating all our meals together where we practice and then we go back to the dorms together I mean it really is a different type of camaraderie that comes out of doing something like that and then when we uh when we were thinking about this season I think everyone just kind of recognized how uh, important it was to our success last year. And so we wanted to try and recreate that. Were there some guys where you saw them after a few days and you were like, I do not want to go into the bathroom after that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was definitely some of that. <laughs> Name the names. Let's get some names on the record. No, no, no. I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. <laughs> oh, okay. Come on. It's the, it's the internet. Nobody's going to notice. Yeah. <laughs> 
Look at Larry, he's trying to trap you. I have a question. This is kind of a funnier question too. Um, you know, we have this photo of Coach Brennan. I'm not sure if you can see it from here, but he's got the stop on climbing the mountain stop sign. Yes. You guys had the fake tattoos of the same image. I presume they're fake. I don't think you have a real one, but um, what was that? How did that come to be? How did he react? Just how funny was that moment? Oh man, it was fantastic. I mean, that's, and that's just a tribute to our, our media team. Our media team is fantastic and, and they're extremely creative. And so when, when that, uh, that stop sign that says stop on climbing the mountain became so big, you know, they had the idea of Photoshopping those tattoos on some players on the team and posting them on Twitter. And you, you would have been amazed how much, because they did such a good job. So many people really wanted to know whether they were real or not. And even players on the team and I had people outside of the team asking me, but you know, our, our media team is, is really awesome. <laughs> That's okay. So it was Photoshopped. I was almost wondering if yes. it was a print that they somehow like temporarily no. tattooed on you. That's, that's all Photoshop. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so obviously, you know, being in football, your father played football. When was it that you kind of realized that this is also for you? I mean, not everyone follows in their father's footsteps, but genetically speaking, was there a moment in, in youth football or when you were a kid where you're like, wait, I, I think I think I can actually do this? Uh, I, I would have to say it was during high school. Um, uh, my, my sophomore year, I got pulled up to varsity and, and started to have some success as a really young player. And, and I think that was a point where I was kind of starting to see that I, I could be, could be good at it, you know, and, and it had always been my dream. So, so that had never changed, you know, but I would say when my sophomore year of high school was when I realized that maybe I could make that dream come true. So you and your dad are both listed at 6'2", 270. I'm not sure if he's still 270 pounds, but that was his playing weight at the time. Uh, so can you outbench him today? Probably, probably. <laughs> I have Pro probably. Well, I, mean, that's, I need a more definitive. I mean, you should be, you know, like, you know, you're, you're, at your size, you're probably a 400, 450 pound bench guy. Oh, my, my dad is, is still, uh, he still looks like he can play, man. He's, he's still a big guy and he's still bigger than me. Uh, height wise. I, I definitely weigh more than him now, but, uh, yeah, he's, he still looks like he can play. So the interesting part of this is obviously you have great genetics on your dad's side, but I read that your mom is a bodybuilder or at least she was a bodybuilder. So like, did you grow up when everybody else was, you know, having their, you know, peanut butter and jelly and you were having a protein shake and, and some, <laughs> some, some lean chicken to devour? What, what was that like? You know, my mom still is a bodybuilder. Um, she's actually getting ready for a competition right now um, and, and she loves it. And she's honestly an, an inspiration for me. There's always, always good food to eat around the house. I can ask her questions about my diet and things like that, which is really helpful. And and the biggest thing, honestly, is that uh, she just sets a really good example for me in terms of habits and eating and lifting and stuff like that. So she's out benching both you and your dad then, basically. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's an example of like maybe a favorite clean meal that you eat? That's some, something that your mom would cook for you or tell you about? Because obviously everyone tries to diet, but we don't have that necessary insight that you probably have. Oh, I, I think you can't go wrong with ground beef and rice. I, I eat that on a very consistent basis, lean ground beef. And if you want to go even leaner, you can do ground turkey. Um, but those are two of the best things you can put in your body in terms of good quality food. What is a day like for you? It's always incredible to me uh, what student athletes have to go to with practice and class and, and all your obligations. Mm -hmm. What is it like? I mean, what time do you get up? When is training? When is class? What do you have to do? Depending on when we start meetings, I like to get to the stadium an hour before um, just so I can stretch or do get, take care of things before we actually start the day as a team. Um, so that'll normally be around six o'clock. I like to get there around six o'clock and I'll eat breakfast before then. Um, and then I'll eat again before practice, which is normally around 10 o'clock practice till around noon and then class around two o'clock. And then from there, go back to the stadium, watch film. Um, and obviously you got to make sure I eat during that period of time too. So normally my days end around and also treatment is somewhere in there. I got to spend time in the training room. Um, normally my days end around five o'clock in terms of football and school stuff, um, which isn't, you know, no, no, no different than, uh, than anyone else, but 
Yeah. Well, you have a, a 3.6 GPA in business management, so you must be doing something right. Uh, have you thought about the business of the NFL or are we looking too far ahead? Uh, obviously, it's a dream of mine, but uh, you never know. Um, I'm just I'm just trying to be the best college football player I can be right now. Did Lawrence type that out for you to say, come on, he man. actually did I mean, it. No, he yeah. actually did it. <laughs> he did. No, he did it. He did. it. Oh, oh, OK. All right. <laughs> yeah. I thought. No. It, it just sounded it had a it had a Lawrence type ring to it. But it, you seem, truth. you know, you seem especially with the beard, uh, you're almost like a giant teddy bear. You seem to be too nice to be as destructive as you are on the football field. Is there a different Cade Hall that comes out on Saturdays? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you got to you got to have a little bit a uh, bit of a chip on your shoulder when you play football and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I don't uh, I like to remind myself that I'm a football player and a person, you know, so I, I don't necessarily want to be the same person on the football field that I am every single day. Yeah, well, it might be dangerous for the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. I probably uh, wouldn't have very many friends. So, <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, yeah. At 62270, I don't think we're going to be doing a lot to stop you from whatever you feel like doing at any given moment. All right, well, Larry's kind of like that, too. So he's kind of a teddy bear behind the scenes. But then when, he, when the lights come on, uh -huh. you got to look out for him. So I'll, I'll, let, him, I'll let him wrap it. Uh, well, I got one more thing I wanted to ask you about, because um, you mentioned the social media team at San Jose State, which really does a great job. Yeah. And I saw some video of you guys on Twitter singing lean on me in the locker room of lean on me when I'm not strong that, you know, that yeah. song. So is that a tradition or, you know, what was that a one-off? What was that about? We all need somebody to lean It is a tradition, actually, and it, it started last year. Um, one of my defensive line teammates, actually, uh, we, we do this thing before games. You know, we just spend time together. Some guys watch other football games. You know, it's just just so we're all together as a team the night before games. And one night, uh, one of my teammates was just singing that song with a couple other guys, just a cappella. And uh, Coach Brennan really, really liked it. And we started doing it as a team. And it, it became this really cool tradition that, brings everyone together and, and reminds us that, that we're a team and to love each other. Can you give me a few seconds of lean on me? Oh, a couple no, of bars. Larry, come on. You come don't want to hear that. Cade? I promise. Cade. <laughs> you do Why are you holding out, that. Cade? I'm going to do being... everyone a favor and, and pass. <laughs> Why are you being so difficult? Again, Lawrence fan coaching you in the background saying, no, 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 don't say. Um, uh, lastly, uh, you wear number 92, but your Twitter handle is Cade Hall 97. Yes. Um, why 97? Uh, 97 was my dad's number, one, one of his numbers when he played in the NFL. So 97 was always, you know, my favorite number, so to speak, my favorite football number. And then when I got to San Jose State, um, that number was already taken. And I also just wanted to uh, sort of make my own, have my own number, you know, and not, uh, not just use his. Okay. Um, lastly, George Kittle's father writes him a letter before every game. Does your dad do anything similar in that regard? Or is it mostly, I know you have post-game discussions about, hey, you could have done this or you could do that, or I like the way you did this, uh, tactically speaking. Uh, I get a text from my dad uh, before every game. You know, nothing, nothing real specific, just reminders to play hard and not think too much and stuff like that. Remember that you're 6'2", 270, and an angry man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the trick. With authority.